So the idea for this video is to make a regolith cooler so that you can take the hot regolith that comes from space and cool it down and generate power out of that heat using steam turbines and end up with a nice cool regolith. Like in this case, I get it down to about 10 degrees uh, Celsius. Um, now with all things in this game, there's a lot of ways to do this and there's some, there's some really advanced you know, strategies for approaching this that are really neat, uh, but that's not, that's not what I'm going for in this video. What I'm going for in this video is let's keep it straightforward and relatively simple. And I, I guess I'd also kind of like to keep the whole build rather small. I remember way back when I first tried to make a regolith cooler, it just seemed really difficult to get the regolith to cool down. Uh, but you know, it's actually not difficult to get regolith to cool down. The thing that makes it seem hard is that there's just so much of it. Remember a, a conveyor rail carries twice as much mass through it as a liquid pipe. And in addition to that, there's three of them. Uh, generally speaking, coming from your meteor showers, you'll get about three rails of regolith. So you end up with 60 kilograms per second worth of regolith, and if you want to cool all of that down to a reasonable temperature, it's just, it's just a lot of work. So even my more advanced strategies for cooling regolith it tends to use a fair bit of space, and that's just because it just takes a certain amount of surface area in order to cool down that much mass. So let's say that this regolith cooler produces a net output of about 1400 watts. Which, I mean, 1400 watts is good, but it's not that good. It's pretty hard to justify making this big old build just for 1400 watts from the regolith. It seems more likely to me that the main reason you'd want to do this is to make your regolith cold. The big reason that I can think that you'd want to have cool regolith is so that you can feed shovels down inside your base without heating up everything. Of course, if you're like me, you also don't mind having a big old build to generate some power. You like to try to leverage every possible resource, and that's one of them. This part of the regolith cooler gets the temperature down to about 100 degrees just by soaking up the heat and feeding it to the steam turbines. And there's another part of the regolith cooler down here that uses powered active cooling in order to cool it down even more. Uh, you could definitely set this up to get it down to whatever temperature you prefer. In this case, I'm getting it down to about 11 or 12 degrees. So I guess I'll talk a bit about how it works and then I'll build it with dupes so you can see how it goes. All right, as you can see, there's three rails of regolith, and that's, that's pretty normal for the amount of regolith that you can harvest. It goes immediately into the steam underneath these steam turbines, and it gives up quite a bit of heat there. Like, it's going in at about 300 degrees, and it looks like it's going out at, let me see, about 240, 200. And it goes into this series of, let me show you the overlay. It goes into this series of heat sinks. There's four heat sinks, each one of these rows of aluminum tiles. So each rail of regolith goes along the length of those heat sinks in order to transfer as much heat into those heat sinks as possible before you're moving on to the next one. By the time it comes out the bottom of those four heat sinks, it's down to about 100 degrees. Those heat sinks are kept cool using the water that comes out of the steam turbines. The water comes out of these steam turbines and it gets all directed into one pipe and goes down the side into a series of uh, liquid valves. Each of these valves is set to let one kilogram per second of water through. Since we have four steam turbines and a steam turbine produces two kilograms of water per second or up to two kilograms of water per second, then we can get by with eight of these liquid valves and therefore eight pipes each carrying one kilogram per second. The reason why I break it up into one kilogram per second is because a pipe that's carrying one kilogram per second or less doesn't have the problem of liquids inside changing state. You can go ahead and heat these little one kilogram bubbles of water up as much as you want and they won't change state into steam until after they leave the pipe. So you can see the water goes in at 95 degrees and uh, by the time it gets up through the heat sinks to the top it's up to about looks like 172. The water comes out these eight vents and is returned to the steam room where it can be processed again by the steam turbine. So that way all of the heat goes through the steam turbines eventually. That whole system can get the regolith down to 100 degrees. As you see, it's leaving those, those heat sinks at 100 degrees. Uh, you could add more of these heat sinks if you like and get closer to 95 degrees, but you, you'll reach a point of diminishing returns very quickly. Shaving off a couple of degrees doesn't seem worth adding more heat sinks to me. So this series of four heat sinks is a heat exchange. I find that people often have a hard time understanding why you would separate these heat sinks with insulation between them. I also often have a hard time explaining it, but it makes a tremendous difference. 
Imagine, for example, this heat sink, which is 173 degrees, we're, te we're touching this heat sink, which is 124 degrees. We have a 50 degree difference by keeping them separate, but if they were touching each other, then they'd basically just be the same temperature. If you use one heat sink that's all the same temperature, it becomes difficult or impossible to decrease the temperature of the regolith all the way down to 100 degrees, because clearly if your heat sink doesn't get down to 100 degrees, you just can't cool it that much. By using several separate heat sinks, we can maintain a temperature gradient, and it just works much better. I have an aqua tuner up here in the steam. Its job is to keep these four steam turbines cool. You'll see I have a loop of water that runs through the aqua tuner to do that. Since the regolith that comes out of the heat exchange is down to 100 degrees, you can't really cool it down anymore using a steam turbine. To cool it further, you have to use powered cooling, so it's going to cost you power in order to do the job. If your only goal was to use the heat in the regolith to generate power, you're pretty much done. But if you want to cool the regolith even further so that you can, for example, send it through your base to feed shovels or send it through your base to a regolith melter without having it heat up your base on the way, something like that, then you might want to use additional cooling. For that, I have these two heat sinks. If you want to cool down this regolith even further, it's tempting to think to yourself, well, I'll just put some aqua tuners up here in the steam and I'll use it to cool down the water that's going down to these heat sinks anyway. And then the water, since it will be even colder than 95 degrees, will cool down the regolith even further. There's a whole bunch of reasons why that doesn't work very well. If you want to cool the regolith all the way down to something like 10 degrees, then you'll want to cool the water down to about zero degrees. But if you cool this much water all the way down to zero degrees, then you've removed way too much heat energy. Not only will it cool the regolith down to zero degrees, but the water will still be cold by the time it comes up to the top and goes back into the steam. The ultimate effect is that you're just making the steam cold and taking away from the heat energy that your steam turbines could be generating. If you take only some of the water and cool it down to zero degrees, then you need to make a separate set of heat sinks so that that water can cool the regolith in those heat sinks and the rest of the water can cool the regolith in these heat sinks. That's already a bit too complicated to do it that way. But if you did anyways, there's other problems you're going to run into. Like what happens when these rails run out of regolith? If one of these rails runs out of regolith, then your cooling needs are reduced by a third, but the amount of water in your system that you're cooling down to zero degrees remains unchanged. So you have to add even more automation to compensate for that, and the whole thing just becomes a giant mess. I think the best way to handle the powered cooling is to just make it its own separate system. That's what this is over here. It's just a couple of aqua tuners, and they cool polluted water in a loop that goes through these two heat sinks. There's a couple of steam turbines to soak up the heat from the aqua tuners. And all together, it's actually pretty simple. It's just some powered cooling that runs through these two heat sinks. According to the math, two aqua tuners running polluted water have enough power to reduce the temperature of this much regolith by 100 degrees. What we're getting is, well, it's going into the heat sinks at about 100 degrees, and it's coming out at about 10 degrees. If you use powered cooling like this, then you don't end up generating any power from the entire system. It seems to balance out just about right, so that these turbines and these turbines generate enough power to drive these three aqua tuners. So hopefully your goal was to cool down the regolith and not generate power. You could certainly set this up, so instead of trying to remove 100 degrees from the regolith, you only tried to remove, say, 50 degrees from the regolith. Then you wouldn't need to run these aqua tuners as much, and you would not use as much power, but you wouldn't get much benefit from it. If you just wanted to see a tour of the build, then I think you're done with this video. For those of you who would like to see the process of building it, I can demonstrate that now. So, over here I have a ladder which will go up the left side of the build. If you do the math, you only need three steam turbines in order to reduce the temperature of the regolith from 300 degrees down to 100 degrees. But since the steam turbines themselves generate some heat, and you use an aqua tuner to get that heat away from the steam turbines and back into the steam, if you do the math on that, you end up with enough heat that three steam turbines isn't quite enough. You'll see that I'm using some obsidian tiles instead of insulation around the top of this. Remember the vacuum out here is a perfect insulator anyway. Since these particular tiles are in space exposure, we need some drywall behind there to prevent the gases from escaping. Now I'll put in the steam turbines. I 
I put a hole in the top of this chamber so that I can put a bottle emptier right here and put some water in this room in order to keep the steam turbines cool. In the build I just showed you, I used a hydrogen atmosphere for that, but it's more complicated than it's worth, so I'll just use a little water on the floor. You know, actually, I don't want to build that quite yet. Let's build the heat exchange from the bottom up so that it's easy for the dupes to reach all of the tiles. Another thing we need running through this heat exchange is pipes to carry the water up and the conveyor rails to carry the regolith down. If we have all three rails of regolith going in the same place, then that will tend to make the steam very hot over here in this corner. And if it gets over 200 degrees, then it's not, that's too hot for the steam turbines to change the heat energy into power most efficiently. So I'm gonna to try to prevent that at least to some degree by having this rail of regolith going go in the left side. All right, now we need the pipes for the water that goes from the bottom to the top. Actually, let's put in the uh, the liquid valves, actually. So we need, um, we have four steam turbines, so they can produce a total of eight kilograms per second of water. So we need eight liquid valves down in the bottom. I guess I'll use an aluminum radiant pipe. I'm well that aluminum has such good conductivity it's hard to not use it. I'm pretty confident you could get by without something that's quite as uh, you know ha that has lower conductivity like I guess perhaps iron would be fine. Um, so you'll see we, we want to route the pipe through this first heat sink and there will be another heat sink right here, another one two above that, another one two above that. And the last one, these last three tiles are inside the steam room and there's not really any point in running the pipe through that area. So I'll just put it right here and the liquid vent will go on the end of the pipe like this. Let's blueprint in the aqua tuner. Uh, so I'm going to put a couple of, there will be a row of metal tiles right here. I'm going to put a couple of airflow tiles on top of that, right there. And that's just so that the aqua tuner can sit on top of those tiles. We have to make the aqua tuner out of steel because that's, that's just how hot steam in this room is going to be. And we'll put in some pipes to run water through that. So the point of this aqua tuner is to keep the steam turbines cool. So I want the pipe to run across like through this room uh, to keep all of the steam turbines cool. So let's put a let's put a pipe through that room, and I'm going to put the pipe along the bottom because we're just going to use kind of a, a a puddle of water in the bottom of this room for all of the cooling, and that'll make the pipe go through all of that water and keep it cool. This is an insulated pipe. What am I making that out of? Let's uh, let's not use actual insulation for it. Let's use uh, igneous rock is is pretty good for an insulated pipe. Um, that the water will run into the aqua tuner and I want to put in a bypass. I usually put the bypass in like this, but there's other pipes down there. So I'm going to put the bypass in up here. And uh, so water will go into the aqua tuner and then out this pipe and then up to, um, yeah, that'll, that'll work fine. And then up to the other end of our, our radiant pipe that keeps those cool. And I'll put a bridge in right here. So the deal with this bridge is, I, I know it's hard to see because everything's a blueprint right now, but the deal is when the aqua tuner is not running, uh, meaning the water is cold enough that the aqua tuner doesn't have to cool it, then the aqua tuner will turn off 
and instead of the water in the loop running through the aqua tuner, it will run through this pipe and over the bridge. That way the water will continue to circulate even when the aqua tuner isn't operating because the water is already sufficiently cold. Let's blueprint in the automation that makes the aqua tuner turn off when the water in the pipe is sufficiently cold. And it's getting, I know it looks really busy right there right now because there's lots of blueprints. You know what, I think, uh, I think we're definitely ready to put in the next layer of tiles down here. So here's insulation and we'll let our dupe start working on that. So we need a liquid pipe thermosensor and I'm gonna put it right there on top of that pipe, which is the pipe that goes into the aqua tuner. If that, thermosensor says that the water is already cold enough, then we want it to turn off the aqua tuner so that the aqua tuner doesn't cool it down so much that it freezes. So I'll connect that thermosensor to the aqua tuner, um, but I'm not gonna connect it directly. I'm gonna put a filter gate between them there. So the point of the filter gate is just so that when the aqua tuner turns off, it stays off for at least five seconds. Um, that The idea is just prevent it from turning on and off quickly because you can end up wasting a lot of power that way. All right, so there's our big old heat exchange. Uh, I'm gonna put in some power wires now. We'll have this heavy watt wire come out this side of that room. I'll make it go down right on top of the ladder. Whoops. There we go. And I'll put it, I'll make it go inside this room right here to power the aqua tuner. Now I'll blueprint in some pipes for the exhaust from the steam turbines. Let's see, I'll make those, um, I'll make those insulated pipes and uh, I usually make insulated pipes out of igneous rock, so let's do that. I'm gonna make it go down this side of the build. There we go. And that water goes into these, uh, the valves. We've gotta set all those valves to one kilogram per second also. The room with the steam turbines is about finished. I'm gonna finish the wall on this side because I don't think my dupes need to get in there anymore. And I'll tell them to start delivering water to the bottle emptier. We need to get some water into the steam room so that we can have steam in the steam room. So I'm gonna put a couple of bottle emptiers in here to get that started. And I'm just gonna put a tile right there to keep the water from running off the side out of the steam room. I think there's plenty of water up here in our steam turbine room now, so I'm going to get rid of this and close off the top. I'll set these two bottle emptiers so that my dupes start delivering water to them. My cooling loop that cools the steam turbines, I need to be able to get water into that loop somehow. The way I like to do that is to just redirect it from the exhaust that comes from the steam turbines into the cooling loop. I think I can do that, actually I can do that right here with that bridge. My dupes can't quite reach these little things they need to build down here underneath, so I'm gonna put some ladders in so that they can reach those. 
Let's put conveyor chutes on the end of these conveyor rails so that we can see the regolith as it comes out. The only thing left to do for this part of the cooler is to wait for enough water to get into our steam room so that we have as much steam as we want. It looks like there are, let me see, 3 times 20 tiles. There are 60 tiles in the steam room. Let's say we want 50 kilograms of water per tile. We have 10 tiles of water here and we want 3,000 kilograms. So in theory, we ought to wait until we have 300 kilograms per tile. Actually, I don't feel like waiting at all. I'm just going to use the sandbox to brush in the water that we need. There we go. Now we don't need these bottle emptiers anymore. We can finish the wall over there as soon as those body em emptiers have been deconstructed. Now I think this part of the regolith cooler is ready to go. So I'll just attach the conveyor rails to the incoming conveyor rails from my space setup up here. The rails of regolith are connected, here they come. Let's keep an eye on the temperatures that happen. Whoops, I just realized I didn't set up the liquid pipe thermosensor to turn off the aqua tuner when the water in the cooling loop is cold enough. Uh, that's this water that's running around cooling the steam turbines. Um, we want it to turn off the aqua tuner if the water in the loop is below, uh, no, we want it to turn on the aqua tuner if the water in the loop is above 14 degrees. It looks like our steam temperature is nearly there. The steam is hot enough now for all of our steam turbines to begin working. I see we have a broken pipe or something going on. I wonder what happened. It looks like this liquid valve was never set to allow only one kilogram per second. It's especially bad news for us because we broke a pipe that's way inside the heat exchange. And uh, if I wasn't using a sandbox mode, we'd have to dig in there somehow with a dupe and fix it. Since all of the steam turbines are working now, uh, we're sending 8 kilograms per second of water down to these uh, the liquid valves, and that water is going up in a counterflow through the heat exchange. All right, I'll let this run for a couple of cycles so it gets up to temperature and we can see how much power it actually produces. The steam turbine overproduction was 1,071 kilojoules. So I'll just use the calculator to work that out. 1,071,000 ,001 joules and there's 600 seconds in a cycle. So this produced a net power output of 17, well, about 1800 watts. Let's do the second part of this. Let's suppose you want to cool down the regolith even more than that. So you need some powered cooling in order to do that job. It's not really part of this building. It's kind of a separate a separate utility. So, you know, just build it wherever you like, I guess. I'll put in the walls for that. Uh, so below this is the steam room. We need space for two steam turbines. Two, three, four. If you have aqua tuners, um, two of them running at the same time, then the amount of heat that they generate if they're cooling water or polluted water is enough to need 1.33 steam turbines in order to process it all. So I'm gonna, that's why I'm making enough space for two steam turbines. I'm going to start putting in the water. A couple of aqua tuners. We need a couple of heat sinks to route that cold, that cold polluted water through. figure out how much water I actually want in here. So this is 10 tiles wide and 3 tiles high. So along the floor I need the depth of the water to be 9 kilograms and we are well we're already there basically. All right. So we don't even need we don't even need this uh, the bottle emptier anymore. I'm going to have them deconstruct that. I'm going to need a conductive joint plate right here and uh, we'll send some we'll put some little bit of water up here in the steam turbines as which will be the medium that keeps those cool. Put the plumbing in. So I want to run polluted water through this cooling loop because it can get a bit colder than regular water. So this goes that way and this goes that way. And it's it's kind of, I know it's a lot of plumbing down here and it may be a little confusing and uh, it's because I'm putting a, a bypass in for each of these of these aqua tuners.
put a radiant pipe up here so that the cooling loop can keep the, the steam turbines cold. And I will put, I'll use insulated pipes to go to these heat sinks. There'll be one there and one, two tiles above it. So it'll look like, that looks good to me. We use radiant pipes to go through the heat sinks themselves. I don't need this anymore. And I'll put in this tile. What else do we need up here in the steam turbine room? I think I already put the pipes in for their, their exhaust. Yeah, so we just need a power cable, I guess. And I want to connect the power to our main power grid over there. This, this device is going to use more power than it makes, so it has to be connected to external power regardless. So I'm putting an automation that turns off the aqua tuners if the water in the pipe is already sufficiently cold. It looks like these pipes are in, so I can put the next layer, the next layer of insulation in. Oh shoot, I forgot to put the, the rails through. Uh, let's cancel everything. Cancel everything. I have to put the uh, the conveyor rails through the heat sink or else obviously this is not going to work. We have those conveyor rails in place now. I'm going to put in the the insulation. We'll have the dupes build that layer of insulation back in and then we can put a layer of uh, another layer of metal uh, above it as a heat sink. It looks like everything down here is ready to go. I'll set up I'll set up these liquid pipe thermo sensors for the right temperature. We want the aqua tuner to be on if the temperature in the pipe is above Ooh, actually for polluted water it should be above negative six. Let's finish closing up that room. Our last layer in of this heat sink here. I don't have an obvious source of polluted water in my base. I'm just going to sandbox in a thing that will give me some polluted water to fill up that cooling loop with. So I'm filling up that cooling up loop with polluted water. Um, that means the aqua tuners will be able to start cooling it down, which will cool down these two heat sinks, which will cool down the regolith, and we should get some nice cool regolith. All right, it's working. The aqua tuners are cooling these heat sinks. The regolith is going through those heat sinks and being cooled down by the aqua tuners. All right, I think the entire build has reached an equilibrium. To sum up, let's have a look at the temperatures that we're getting from the regolith. It's, it's going in at about 300 degrees and it's coming out of the build at, let me see, 15 degrees, 12 degrees, and 10 degrees. Of course, since we're using this powered cooling, we're not actually generating any power. In fact, I think on the balance, we may be using a little more power than we're producing. And that's, uh, but that's, that's the way cooling down regolith goes. I think that's all I have to say about this particular build. Uh, again, there's, you know, a hundred ways to do this. Uh, what I was going for in this build was to not get too advanced or crazy with the setup and just keep it straightforward and uh, simplistic and also try to keep that the entire building fairly small it's hard to ca it's hard to you know cool regolith with a small building it just needs a lot of surface area to get all that heat out of it thank you for watching and i'll see you for the next one